right, what's going on, guys? It is time for another episode of the Chasing Waypoints podcast. We are officially at episode 88. That is right. 88 of these things have been going out, and uh, it was pretty funny. We were uh, in the car headed to Baja Rally uh, earlier this week, and I was in the car with my dad, and we were listening to the latest episode, and just, you know, I'm, I'm going over it, just listening to things and getting through it, and like, okay, what could I be doing? Like, how many times did I say, um, or, you know, all my little catchphrases and stuff like that. So what we have got going on today, though, is something different. That is right. It is the Baja Rally. No, not really. We're going to do a Baja Rally recap because we got a couple of young guns uh, that need to get some uh, some airtime on this because holy hell did they lay it. Uh, wait, can I say that in the first 30 seconds? Ouch. Okay. Anyway, rambling on here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the year of the rookie. That is what we're going to be talking about today on the Chasing Waypoints podcast, episode number 88. And I am looking forward to it, man. All sorts of stuff down at the Baja Rally this week. Uh, Scotty and the team, Mauricio Parra, Daniel, those guys. If you guys listen to the uh, Baja Rally preview show, you got an introduction to who they are and what they do for the organization. And it was epic. But this episode, we are going to be talking about the rookies. We will save the recap episode for possibly next week. Still lining up the calendar, making it happen because we've got Sonora Rally already right on top of us. So looking forward to that one, making sure we get uh, we get ready for it as we just finished up a Baja Rally. And now it's now it's time for the Sonora Rally up next here in North America. We'll talk a little bit about rally happenings as well. But anyway, let's turn the party down and let's get right to the episode. So. It was pretty funny, right? 80, 88 episodes now, right? We're, we're, me and my dad are in the car and we're headed down there and I'm, you know, I'm critically listening to my episode and, and you know, it took a really long time to get over listening to the sound of my own voice and finally did it. And, and here we are 88 episodes later. And, and actually I think it started when I was race directing and doing the whole race calling, uh, at, uh, the RC races and stuff like that, where it was really fast paced, you know, a lot of brain work, um, you know, it reminds me of that whole Ron Burgundy thing, right? So don't put it on the teleprompter because Ron will just read it. It is literally the same thing when you're looking at and trying to do this on uh, a program like Live Time. You're watching lap times come through. You're watching lead changes. You're watching all of this stuff. Then you got to have one eye on the track and calling for marshals and doing all of this stuff. And it is a very, very intense, you know, few hours when you're doing it. You have to be working it. And a lot of times uh, you you run late, right? You know, five, three, two, three minutes here, two, three minutes there. And next thing you know, you're an hour behind on your program. And so very difficult. But anyway, what I was getting out of that, I think that's really where I got the sound. I got over the sound of my own voice because that uh, for a lot of people, you know, being on camera um, or listening to uh, yourself talk, sometimes you think that, oh, you know what? Yeah, that's um, that is not my voice. Who the hell is that? But uh, whatever. So anyway, we're doing that. We're going down to this episode and, and I threw on episode number one. And I don't know, it'd been a while probably since my dad had heard it, but we were laughing at, you know, the comparison between the most recent episode where we talked with uh, David Pearson and Mike Johnson and then going back all the way to me rambling with no intro music, no nothing, rambling about the 850 GS and the uh, KTM 790 back when I had just purchased the 790 and I had already had the 850 for a while. So that was pretty interesting going back to that episode and listening to it and, uh, and just kind of, you know, reminiscing on how far we've come. So speaking of how far we've come, right? The year of the rookie, this has been, uh, uh, we've been building this year up. We're midway through rally month and, and there's been, uh, a lot of people stepping up and getting into the game and, and, and getting out, reaching for information on how to even get started. Right. So that to me, uh, shows that there's a growth in the sport and there is stuff coming along. So I think that we need to obviously continue to grow the sport. Um, you know, we've, we've seen people go out, um, out into the wild, uh, you know, Liz Ephenbeck, he's volunteering and helping and just showing up at the event and uh, and working with the Kansas City rally team guys and, and, and just becoming part of the family. You know, rally family is huge and rally family keeps growing. 
And, and that is a great sign for us here in the U S for us to continue to do it. And, and I'm, I am taking my job more seriously, um, in, in working and, and talking to people and helping the sport grow, uh, even more so, you know, there's a, there's a passion for rally and getting it, you know, getting into the, the events and, and covering the events and doing that kind of stuff. And then there is the, the growth of it, you know, and watching that, that turn around and actually grow a sport. So I'm looking forward to it, but really, really, really what we're after and, and what I really wanted to talk on today's episode. And, and we've got, we've got some episodes lined up. I really got to get the calendar going here because, uh, this is going to be an interesting week. We've got uh, with Sonora Rally coming up and all of that. But give me a few minutes. We'll recap uh, what we got coming up on the rally stuff here in just a moment. Uh, all right. So Baja Rally just went off. And the big news out of that and the reason why I decided that, you know what, we're going to do a year of the rookie uh, episode on this one is because there were 12 of the entrants. There were more rally rookie entrants at the Baja Rally than there were pro entrants. And now, mind you, the pros are busy. Just finished up with Morocco. Uh, and then they've got a week off. And then all of a sudden, they've got the Andalusia rally or Andalusia rally uh, in Spain, which was had been originally postponed. So the only thing that kind of sucked about that is, is that you have the Baja rally going off at the same time that you have the Morocco rally. And then you have the Andalusia rally going off at the same time that you have Sonora rally going. So... That was this year that, you know, came around, but there is definitely, um, definitely some stuff in the works. So going back to it. All right. So 12 different competitors, 12 rally rookies at Baja rally. That is a huge rally rookie class when compared, you know, previous years were single digits and, and, you know, the interest was there and there was people, but just people did not, you know, sign up. So. I blame it on the Baja Rally School that they did. I blame it on Sonora Rally and their schools that they have been doing. I blame it on uh, Scott Bright that's done classes as well. I blame it on all of these guys, right? And then I also blame it on people like Mason Klein. Mason Klein has been very inspirational to a lot of people uh, getting into rally. I mean, this kid, you know, I, I still, it's interesting. I still see Mason, I think in technical terms, might still be considered a rookie, you know, Rally 2 blah, blah, blah. But he's probably ran the same amount of roadbook miles or close to as some of the other guys that are getting into the sport that have already been there for a little bit. You know, he, he puts in the work, he runs routes and is constantly running routes, constantly designing routes. He gets phone calls from teams to create routes. So he is definitely on, you know, on track to where he's at and, and hell, let's just say it. I mean, literally, the world rally raid championship he is uh what is it the w2rc uh he is the rally two champion going into the andalusia rally he's got nothing to lose on this one he's just out for the tour and he is already uh points crowned he is the rally two world champion which you know if if you're listening to this one mason congratulations great job on that one that is a huge accomplishment and you've established yourself as the person that uh, when it comes time to uh, rally uh, in rally two category, the race is officially for second place. So keep it up, man. You're doing a good job. OK, so what I'm getting at on that one, though, in, in talking about Mason is, is that he is relatively a newcomer to some people. He is still a rookie, which is awesome. You know, here's this rookie kicking ass out in and in, in the wild. And there are some people that are starting to get in line behind him. And what I'm referring to is uh, this week at Baja Rally, you had the Bronner brothers show up and and lay down a show for the guys. I mean, he these guys were on it, uh, particularly Nick Bronner picking up the W. So both Rally Rookie uh, picking up the win in that class. And then not only that, but put an hour and 46 minutes on the entire field. So he's the overall winner at the Baja Rally. How crazy is that? Now, Rally Rookie, I, you know, we're just going to classify that based on how many rallies you've actually participated in, right? So in technical terms, Mason Klein is no longer a rally rookie, right, by by most definitions. Um, you know, obviously now with uh, Nick Bronner winning it, I think he's going to be promoted to Rally Pro. I don't know. We'll see. Or Rally 1. That remains to be, that's, that's organizational stuff. The main point here, though, talking about this is, is that 
you had Nick Bronner. I remember I did the first stage report and I'm opening up the tracking and I'm expecting to see the usuals and they were up top. The problem is, is they were all two spots lower than they used to be or normally would be. Why? Because you had Nick Bronner and you had Alec Bronner occupying the two top spots. And that is crazy going through the checkpoints, dicing back and forth and making it happen. I mean, these guys laid it down. And so to me, that was absolutely huge, right? Seeing these guys. And I know they've been training with Robert Mann and the Kansas City Rally team, uh, Scott Spears, Fri- Freedom Rally Racing, that whole conglomerate, that group. And and they've done a good job. They were there. They were supporting the riders. It was a great vibe in their camp uh, over, the, over the week. And I was only there a couple of days, had some family obligations and had to come back, um, but definitely was worth... Uh, worth the trip down there, even though it was a couple of days. It was great seeing the rally family and hanging out with everybody, meeting some new people and definitely getting into it. And then I also have to say, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about it in the recap show, but uh, but I have to say uh, hats off to Chris Tavner for stepping up. You know, he he injured himself uh, on the state on the first stage and uh, and decided, you know what, it was a smarter thing to not continue and, and possibly injure himself further. Uh, but then turned right around and and volunteered to help uh, the timing and scoring team and and pretty much handled the that perfect. Uh, so it was really great. Chris, if you're listening, I really appreciate your work and, and helping the organization and, and keeping that thing moving. Uh, it, it, it really worked out. And of course, Mike Johnson also splitting the duties, uh, figuring it out, both having to run the rally comp side of it and having to uh, and and participating in the event as well and picking up a finish with two broken fingers. Uh, that's pretty crazy. So well done on that. A lot of great people surrounding the Baja Rally organization and looking forward to helping that, uh, helping them continue to grow and, and, and continue, right? 10 years now. So that was really awesome. But anyway, okay, so back to it. You're the rookie. So Rally Rookies, Nick Bronner and Alec Bronner, both laying down the law down in Mexico. Uh, Nick Bronner walking away with an hour, 46-minute gap on the next guy, which was absolutely awesome. I mean, that that we're we're ecstatic to see that i'm i'm glad to see that that here we go you know we've got new guys coming in now i'm going to dig in a little bit further i definitely want to get nick on the show and talk a little bit about his racing history and what he's been doing and then got him to this point because remember in, in rally raid there's two things is there's the racing side of it and then there's the navigation side of it and what we see in the dakar right we see these huge blowing dunes and we see these guys bombing down this road that's not always the case. I mean, I have a road book here in my office in the studio, Adventure Taco Studios. And, and if you just spot check the notes, you are you do not normally see notes that are 8, 10, 20 kilometers apart. It's harder to find those. You have 7 kilometers, you have 6 kilometers, you have 10 kilometers, you know, that kind of thing. Now, to give you an idea, right, uh, a 10 kilometer sprint right is is about 6.2 miles so or 10 miles uh how would we do the math on that it's so it's it's 0.62 kilometer or kilometers per mile why am i getting this wrong hey guys what's going on super quick break in the podcast episode i hope you guys are enjoying i just wanted to mention really quick I've been using the anchor.fm platform for all of the podcast distribution and everything. And it is very, very simple. So if you guys have been thinking about getting into your own podcast, doing your own thing, talking about your own adventures and what you've got going on on your side of the planet, it is very, very simple. All you got to do is go down to your app store, whatever that may be, if it's Android or if it's on Apple, download the anchor app, or you can also go to anchor.fm, create an account and get started. It is super, super simple. So anyway, with that being said, back to the episode. It's just, I, I just do it the other way around. 100 kilometers is 62 miles. How about that? Let's just leave it at that conversion. I'll do a rally conversions thing. Uh, I'll probably record it and just like play it randomly in the show. Uh, so people can, can get it. Cause we've got a lot of rallies coming up, including the Dakar rally. So just think of it this way, guys, hundred kilometers is 62 miles. So, or 10 kilometers is 6.2 miles. Now, what I'm looking at here on this stage that I have for this, and this is, by the way, this is uh, one of the Baja Rally stages from 2017. Uh, I'm just checking the columns, looking around, and and there's 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 none. I don't see that 10 to 20 kilometer gap. Now, why are we talking about this distance between notes? Okay, so navigating is is playing your cards and and looking at the routes 
looking at the boxes and determining the direction that you need to take and getting it right every time. Now, that sounds hard, but as I say, right, and we've talked about this in previous, and you guys have heard the new catchphrase, don't worry, it'll make sense when you get there, enjoy the ride. And that is literally the case. So you have notes that are on top of each other that are sometimes less than a kilometer apart or three kilometers apart, which is nothing. But then let's just say, okay, well, you get a 10 kilometer section, right? 10 kilometers between that. You're racing as fast as you can for six miles. So that's all you got. And the helicopters and the organizations, and they know this, so they know where the action shots are going to be. Because otherwise, you're sitting down and navigating and doing all that stuff. So in Rally Raid, it's one thing to be fast, and it's another one to know how to navigate. And you have to combine both of those. And that is the challenge, I think, for the rookies, especially guys that are really, really fast on dirt bikes that are used to the hair scrambles, that are used to uh, the wide open Baja desert racing style, sprint races, that kind of thing. Because... Here's the deal. If you picture yourself, you're going down and, and you know, you're for the recreational riders, you're going out and, and whether it's on the highway or it's on the, you know, some sand wash or something like that, you get into a groove, you get into a pace. And next thing you know, like you're, you know, you're just solely focused on riding the road that you're on. Well, in rally raid, the waypoint is literally sitting there waving at you as you blow by, at, you know, Mach 30 eight or whatever it is because you know you were in race mode right you were in attack mode and the waypoint is just looking at you watching you blow by like you know hey i'm over here and the only thing you've got to go on is all of a sudden the rally comp you know you look down at the screen and the arrow used to say one kilometer ahead and now the thing is saying three kilometers behind you and so now the adventure begins right turning around and doing all that stuff and that's what uh and and that's what the the rally comps kind of job is and, and helps people. So if you think you're going to get lost, not really, you just, there's things you don't know yet on how to find yourself and how to reconcile and how to get back to it. But the big thing is, is that you have to know when to turn it off, right? There's racing and then there's navigating and generally you can't do both. And I'm sure, uh, Jimmy Lewis and, um, Scotty Bloom from Baja rally, all of these guys, they, it's a common theme when you're learning how to rally raid or how to participate in rally raids. It's, you get one at a time, you know? And so the guys that are fast are the ones that can look down at the notes, memorize the notes and then get and, and then focus on what they need to do next and without backing the pace so far down. So there's a lot of practice. That's where road book marking and things like that comes, which is soon going to be out with colored road books already being available. And then now digital road books coming soon. Um, so, well, we will see on that one. But anyway, so back to it, right? You have uh, 12 rally rookies at this year's Baja rally. And I'm looking to see how many of them are going to be at Sonora rally as well, which is a tight schedule, right? Only a week apart and then right back to rally raid. Uh, but, you know, you go, you got guys like uh, John Savanto. John Savanto had a chance to talk to him at breakfast uh, before stage one and and super chill guy. Uh, and, and just out there rally raiding, you know, getting out there, getting it done and, and just picking up the stage finishes. That's huge in rally raid. If you can find your way around the desert, following a bunch of notes on a piece of paper, that is, that takes a level of talent, you know? And then from there, once you get used to, then the speed comes and doing all that stuff, but you got to navigate clean before you can navigate fast. So that's, you know, I don't know, some before the others. Um, but then you had, uh, people like, and we had him on the show as a previous guest, Tony Palandrani as well, you know, out there picking up a stage win on stage six, right. You know, closing with the, the golden brush, as they say in Spanish, you know, con, con de oro. You know it, it was perfect. You know, all of the work, all of the stuff that he's done and participated in and, and training and done this stuff, just writing road books to then put it together on a competitive event and, and be there, you know, top three, top three, top three. I mean, he's, he was up there with these guys and, and is very, very competitive, which is awesome. You know, again, another person that's coming from more of a sprint race background, scramble background, uh, and then transitioning into rally. So I think that that is, that's absolutely huge seeing him down there. Uh, Oswaldo Lara, another guy that literally, uh, Poncho Alonso from the Espro had literally just trained him. I mean, he had, I think maybe 200 kilometers worth of road book knowledge and he was out there laying it down. And yeah, you know, there's things that happen, right? It, that even even pro guys do, and it happens, right? Waypoint management, time management, all of these things uh, can happen. And and sometimes, yeah, you get it you get it wrong, you miss a waypoint, and it just creates a chain reaction. And it's just it's it's part of the rally sport. 
It sucks when it happens, but it's part of it. And then, and the only thing you can do is recuperate from it, right? The only that's okay. You've officially hit rock bottom, blew it up. Now it's time to go back and get it done. Uh, and, and, you know, go for some stage wins, place up on the podium, do all of that stuff, show that, you know, you're there and you're in it, you know, every day in rally raid is a new day and, and whatever happened the previous day, you can't let it drain you because you need every last bit of your mental power, you know, to get onto the next, the next stage. You've got a whole brand new set of notes waiting for you. You got a whole nother adventure waiting for you. So you have to be focused and you have to be able to shake it off. So I think that's 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 absolutely huge. Uh, Tony P's uh, partner that is down racing with him as well. Steve Varney as well was down there. Um, you had uh, Stephanie Schinkel. You had Oswaldo Lara, uh, Norali Schoenstein. Uh, then the Bronner brothers. Let's see. Then uh, Vlad uh, and Alex Gachev. Yeah. And I, I, I'll go with Vlad and Alex. I, I apologize. I can't pronounce their last names. Uh, I believe it's of a Russian background. Um, but all of these guys down there, and, and hats off to both of those guys, right? They had a rough go at it um, and, and definitely had their challenges. And any of those challenges that they had, I think, could have been something to throw in the towel. And, uh, but they didn't, you know, they still focused. They still came back out when the bikes were ready. They still made it happen. And that's, that's absolutely huge. And again, more rally rookies and that is crazy 12 rally rookies at this event which is awesome so i'm curious to see how it's going to go down at uh at the sonora rally uh with them and see you know see where it goes from there right i mean you we've got we've got all these guys that are training we've got more people that are coming and getting into the training and 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 we're going to work on it you know we're going to talk more about this uh I'm, i'm getting closer i'm spending some time today working on the bikes uh, both the 501 and the 790, getting them ready to go do some routes here in San Diego. And, and yeah, you know what? Hey, I'm, we don't have the open desert that's big enough to go, uh, to go do these routes down here. Uh, but the main focus, I mean, I guess we do, right. But the deal is, is that we want to try and get more people into the sport and that's going to happen with things that are more local and easier to do. So why not be able to do stages that are here local uh, that, that involve, you know, public roads, you can do this on public roads. Um, you just have to use common sense, right? You are going to be navigating these roads. It's like you're following a map. Um, so you have to do things accordingly and, and make sure that, uh, you keep yourself safe, right? It's basically, it's a, it's a, it's a guided tour that you're doing. Here's the map, you know, go explore this, this city, go explore this back countryside. And yeah, you're going to go into, uh, you'll, you'll have your paved roads, you'll have your fire roads, you'll have your things like that. You know, that's just part of it, part of the adventure. But the idea is, is that you're, you are now navigating, you are now getting yourself ready to go navigate a rally raid event. I mean, how crazy is that? And you're just literally just going to Starbucks, you know, or going to a bakery or going to, uh, you know, some, some watering hole out in the desert, you know, and, and just exploring what we've have here, just like you would in a rally raid and 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 let's go back to that why you know exploring in a rally raid baja was the greenest i have seen it even last go around with the hurricanes it was so green down there it was absolutely crazy and yeah the bugs sucked but it you know it was what it is i mean it's with you know the gnats or whatever they are um it was absolutely crazy to see how green it was and the guys out on the course for sure got a treat and I didn't get a chance to check very many people back into the, the stages or from the stage. Uh, but the ones that I did do when they all came back, everybody was stoked on the course as usual. But that is par for the course uh, when it comes to Baja Rally. So Scotty does a lot of groundwork. And now with with people like Mauricio, um, you know, joining him out on the routes and just doing it. And, and they get so much time out in the desert and find all of these roads and that's, I, I mentioned it. It's like these were handpicked roads by the organization, right? And, and that is like, we're going to go down this route. We're going to go down that route, you know, and there was new, new legs to these routes, uh, down there as, as mentioned in their, in their driver's meeting or competitors meeting. And so it's very, very, I don't Beneficial is not the word. I think that it is. It's a bucket list item. If you're looking to get into rally, I honestly think that that going to Baja Rally, if you've ridden Baja a bunch, 
uh, you're going to see new roads and stuff like that. So I honestly do believe that it is a bucket list item to go out and, and participate in this event, you know, and I think that that is a very big thing for people to get into it. Um, and then just go out and see it. And you know what? I mean, just treat it as five days or in this case, six days, six days of racing. And you know what? Yeah, you pay the entry fee, you do all of that stuff. But you know what? If you feel like you need a day off, don't go out. You know, I, you know, you want to get the, the, you want to get the finisher's medal, right? You want to do all of that stuff and, and, and you can, but understand that if you, if you really look at how a rally rate is broken down, you basically have however many stages, each stage is a race. So, you know what, I'm going to do the longest stages and I'm going to sit out the short one. And, and you're just doing this because you're down there participating in an event. You're down there in a rally raid competition and and you're just there you don't have to care about the overall now for a lot of racers and competitors it is all about the overall and it is all about racing and it's all about getting the time and that's absolutely perfectly acceptable that is in highly encouraged but just as that is highly encouraged going out to these events and participating in them is highly encouraged now we're going to do um, I'm, and I'm going to start this and this is something that I'm, I'm kind of working on the back end because something that I'm seeing is um, the need for people to help at these events as volunteers. Sonora Rally has again has again has again put out the word uh, that they you know, they have a couple of spots still open uh, for people to come down and volunteer for the event. Uh, Baja Rally, I know uh, being down there, there was there was a little bit of a, a shortage, but you know that's to be expected, right? I mean, it, it's hard to get people to commit for a week, but the more people that know that that is a possibility for people to volunteer for the organization, the better it is. The better it is for the event, the better it is for the events, the better it is for the community, the better it is for the family that that's being created and that's continually growing. So I think that that is that is a very big thing I'm, I'm going to be working on basically is putting together uh, a, a database of, uh, of volunteers. Right. And just basic information and then an interest in what they are looking to do for an organization. And the goal is, is that obviously with permission is, is that, uh, they get listed, um, that information then becomes available to, uh, the organizations, you know, it could be uh, Baja rally. It could be Kota rally. It could be, uh, it could be the Sonora rally, you know, and the idea behind it is, is that if we all stand together in one place and talk about it in one place, the bigger it's going to grow, the easier it is to spread word, the more we're going to learn things and, and continue to, to, to do better. You know, I, every, every event that I've been to that I'm either tracking or that I'm working on, like this time, uh, working closely with Mike Johnson, uh, on doing, uh, doing results and tracking and all that stuff and making sure that, um, that everything was, was properly filled out and, and, and working on that, you know, learning how to set up trackers and things like that was huge. I learned something new. And every time we go to these events, that's the goal. If you're picking up something new, you're, you're doing much, that much better. So uh, coffee break here because, uh, I've been talking for a minute, Man, 27 minutes already. Wow. All right. So with that being said is I, I think that we, we need to help, you know, help these organizations as well, you know, and you can see the back end. you know, that was something that Chris ma- imagined he's like, or, or mentioned was, you know, I was on the competitive side of it. I was on the other side of it, but now being on the, uh, organization side of it, I have a, an idea of all the things that happen and go on, you know, to move, promote these events or, or just to put on these events. So I think that is very, very, um, very critical as well is that the people that are interested in being at these events and can help with these events. Um, and you know, and, and we could go through it, right. There's, there's things that, you know, I, I, I can get with, uh, I mean, I know the timing and scoring side of it, um, I know, um, a little more about the moto medic side of it, but each organization runs a little bit differently and they have their different teams. And so I want to talk to the organizer organizers a little bit about that and, and put together something where again, we can all stand in the same room and, and we can work together on people that are available, uh, to come out to some of these events. And I think that that will help grow it because if we support each other, The only thing we do is grow and everybody becomes an ambassador to the rally raid event. If you are listening to the show and you talk rally raid with your buddies and they look at you dumbfounded, like they don't know what you're talking about, or they look at a road book and they go, huh? And you understand it. 
congratulations, you are an ambassador of the Rally Raid community. And so as such, it is your duty uh, to just talk about it. I mean, and, and show people what you're doing. Because most people, like we say, you know, they look at the road book and they go, nope. Um, because they don't understand it and because they don't see it. So I now crown you, listener, a Rally Raid uh, a, a rally raid liaison? No. Mm, ambassador. Yeah, I think ambassador. We'll stick with ambassador. You are now a rally raid ambassador. And I think that that is huge, right? Um, because we're going to keep growing the sport. Listen, the, the future of motorsport, especially in California, at the rate that they are putting up gates uh, and declining permits for off-road races and insurance is going higher and higher and higher, at the rate that that is happening... Rally Raid will probably be the future of this. I think Rally Raid will be the future of this. And and here's the thing. Well, the spectators and the eyeballs and all that stuff. Like, you can't... Tell me about the Dakar. Tell me nobody watches the Dakar, right? The rest of the world watches the Dakar. Us, a select few here in the States, watch the Dakar. But that number is growing and growing and growing. You've got people like Skylar Howes, you know, picking up the win uh, just recently... Uh, at the Morocco rally, right? Put it all together on the Husqvarna factory ride and just made it happen and picks up the win. Mason Klein rally two, you know, picking up the win at the rally. We are now a force to be reckoned with there in the rally raid scene. Ricky Brabeck third, you know, podiums, 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 you know, that's the whole thing. And, and it's going to continue to grow. And so as we continue to grow, You know, we worked, everybody can do this. Everybody can do that. Everybody can be a rally rookie in a, in a month and everybody could be a rally rookie in two weeks. It literally, all it takes is a phone call to rally moto shop, uh, to get some of their, get some of the basic navigation equipment. Uh, if you guys haven't, it's on the store already. Uh, I haven't made the post. You know what? I will do it today because it is an awesome little device, but I picked up a cell phone. $130 $130 mini cell phone that has a GPS enabled uh, chip in it. And I downloaded the F2R uh, trip meter app. I now have an odometer that's adjustable. Yes, it is a cell phone. Yes, it is smaller. It's about the same screen size as like one of the RNS units or one of the ICO units. Um, you know, is it sunlight readable at midday on the equator with the direct sunlight angle trajectory being at its highest intensity? I don't know, but will it work for what we need to do? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and honestly, one, if the vibrations kill the thing or two, it falls off the bike, I'm not going to be heartbroken. You know, um, I mean, that's not to say, I mean, a hundred bucks is a hundred bucks, but it, it's not a $800 or a thousand dollar iPhone uh, or, or Android phone that's sitting there being exposed to it. I don't, I, I love taking pictures and I love doing video on my phone. Uh, I am not going to subject the camera to that kind of vibration and that kind of abuse. Just, it is what it is. And so, uh, I think that this is a suitable thing to do it and I have it. And, and I, I, God, I talk about this and I literally want to just stop the show and jump into the garage and start setting the bike up, but you know, and, and a manual advanced road book holder. Uh, you motorized it safer. And I said, oh, you know what? Yeah, absolutely. A motorized is safer if you're doing it, but you're now you're you're messing with the buttons and scrolling at the same time. And so, where maybe a manual roadbook holder is going to make you stop and actually adjust it or whatever it is. But you know what? The recipe that we are talking about is for rookies, and it's for basic adventure raid stuff to navigate within your own city, within your own part of the country, wherever you're at. And, and, and just get out there and do road books. That's it. That is, it is no, nothing more than that right now, because later comes the second call to rally moto shop, which is much more expensive. And I have zero responsibility over it. I just say, pick the credit card with the highest points value, uh, given per dollar spent just saying, you'll thank me later. Uh, but anyway, so I think that that is one of those things that if we work if we continue to work on it and we continue to get this recipe out and we can do and, and I, I'm going to do this whole adventure raid thing with, you know, help of some of the local guys um, and, and finding some of these backcountry roads to explore. And the idea behind it is, is that the recipe is public. Here's how you do it. Here's the process. It is not that hard. Go out, ride, lay down a GPX track, come back, convert that GPX track, drop it into rally navigator, and then go decorate the thing. And 
we're not talking about Dakar level decoration, right? With every single hazard and all these fancy things. No, all you got to do is put some lines on the stupid thing, you know, and, and just here, go fancy, change it from a solid line when it's a a road to a dotted line when it's a a off road to a wide line when it's a highway or, you know, okay. Yeah. Get that fancy if anything, but you know, you can put notes in there, you can do different things and just, it is, you know, it's very, very simple. And the road book gets as complicated as you need it to be uh, or as you want it to be. It, it, I think that that is one of the things that I, I definitely learned from Scotty in, in doing the road books is, is that, you know, it's like each each rally raid stage, right? Stage one through six in this case uh, in the event. Each of those stages was literally, okay, hit the office at 8 a.m. and then leave the office at 8 p.m. And nothing other than focusing on that one road book and maybe a lunch break and just decorating and doing it. And it's very difficult because it's one of those things that you at the end, I'm sure you have that feeling. I mean, I when I was DJing and working on on music sets and putting together these, you know, how am I going to make this journey in 13 different songs? And there's always that feeling at the end where it's like song number 10 should have actually not been there. I should have put this one in. And there's, there's always going to be work that you may feel that you need to do, but then you have to understand is that, can you navigate this? And that's, what's important about having these organizers um, and organizations have somebody verify the road books, right? We talked about that with Mike Johnson a little bit, you know, in, in verifying road books, going out and handing a road book, that you just created handing it to somebody and following them and see if they can navigate it. And if they can navigate it, your money, you're good to go. You've, you've made a road book. That's at least understandable. Hey, is this note, this and that there's going to be feedback, you know, this note here, note 28, you know, I saw this, but then if you put this, it would be a little bit more clear or definite, right? You know, if you want to know you, if you get to an intersection you know, oh, okay, cool. You put an intersection, you put the stop signs and all that stuff. But you see the building over there on the left across the way. Well, the road book works without that building being there. But if you put an, a building icon there, well, now it starts removing that like, okay, yeah, I am. I am actually here. There, Here's the intersection. There's the building on the left. Uh, oh, look, there's a water tower over there. Okay, let me add the water tower over here on this side of the road book, you know. Okay, so now when the person gets here, they look around, they look at it. Okay, well, we met the basics. We're at an intersection. We got stop signs all around. And okay, well, uh, building on the left, building on the left, water tower on the right, water tower on the right. We are where we need to be. That's it. And so just basics like that, you know, every change in direction, is there something there that would help you define that change in direction that's just not the arrow, right? Right. You know, you have, obviously you have the odometer, but you know, if you're off a little bit or the calibration's not correct or whatever, you know, the odometer is going to get you close, but what can you add in that note box that's going to make it definite that will add a level of it? And, and you, there's never going to be a definite because you could have blown that intersection at the very next intersection. Instead of there being a building, there's a house. And then instead of there being a water tank, there's a water truck. And you could, well, and then the doubt comes in. Well, I know it's not a water tank, but it's a water truck. Maybe they didn't have a water truck, uh, water truck, uh, icon. Yeah, that's it. And you make the left turn like you were supposed to at the last intersection. And now you're lost. Okay. Well, you're going to figure that out in a few minutes when the next note doesn't line up. And remember what we were talking about earlier, sometimes that next note is not even a kilometer away. So you're not even going to travel a full mile before you realize like, Oh, nope. Time to go back. And then you realize it. So there's a lot to it, but there's also not a lot to it. It's just, it's as complicated as you want it to be. And I think that the best thing that we can do is, is at least just start off with something simple. So that is what we're going to be working on is let's just do, let's just do the simple, right? It's the year of the rookie. There's a lot of guys that we're going to talk to about, uh, about this and, and, and how their experience is getting into rally rate has been and what they've done and what have been the challenges. That's going to be my mission. That's going to be my goal. I'm going to be working on the rally calendar, uh, this week to make sure that we can get some, get some traction going, get some, get some shows going that are, that we're going to show some more of that, you know, more of the rally rookies getting into the sport, uh, and what they've done. I really enjoy doing the end of bivouac interviews. Uh, and talking to people and, and, and really just seeing how this grows, you know, and 
I mean, it's, it's going to grow, right? You've got the Kota rally uh, that just went off. You know, we've still got a pending conversation with Gavin Ferguson, the number three spot uh, at the rally. Uh, and no stranger to the podium, I believe. He podiumed the, the previous year at the inaugural event as well. So we've got... We've got events here stateside that are happening, that are going down, and I think that we need to continue to do that. And so with that being said, I think we really need to get into the garage and start working on some motorcycles because this is uh, this is about time. Well, actually, i got to get ready for a, a little birthday party, but, you know, do that and then coming home. And so you guys, when you guys are listening to this, I will be in the garage uh, working on a motorcycle, getting it done. So drop the questions, hit me up on Instagram guys, uh, give you the recipe for next week. So my plan for, uh, the Sonora rally is, is I am going to be helping. I am there, uh, helping the organization and rally comp. I'm somewhere in the middle there. Uh, I'm going to be doing some days. I will have my computer up and doing tracking, uh, every day, but there's a couple of days that they need me to really handle it for them, which looking forward to it. You know, I, I enjoy keeping track of everybody, uh, and, and being the eye in the sky and, and watching people, uh, at these events. So with that, uh, I will be there. I will be doing, uh, my plan is to be on Instagram. So if you guys are on Instagram, please make sure you follow at chasing waypoints. Uh, I am going to be doing, uh, some, some reports throughout the day. Uh, looking forward to doing one in the morning with a stage recap, another one midday with the update results, and then another one at the end of the day, once everybody is home. So that is my plan. That is what I want to do. We'll see how we can execute it. Uh, it, you know, sometimes you get caught up in all of this stuff and next thing you know, you, you, you run out of time. So that is the plan. So don't forget, please follow at chasing waypoints on Instagram. We are also on Facebook. I am trying to be a little bit more active on the Facebook side of it, but you know, I'm, I'm more of a photographer at heart and I love taking pictures. So, uh, I'm focusing a little more on Instagram at the moment, but you know what? Don't worry. It'll be there. So with that being said, guys, Remember, it'll make sense when you get there. Enjoy the ride. All right, that is a wrap for the Chasing Waypoints podcast this week. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you heard. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and a bunch of others. Also, follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook under Chasing Waypoints, Instagram, Chasing Waypoints underscore official, and of course, the YouTube under Chasing Waypoints. Hope everybody has a good week. We will see you guys for the next episode. Remember, shiny side up, and don't forget to tag us. We want to see where you guys are riding and what you guys are up to. Have a great week.